How to Create Your Very Own Role-Based Enterprise Training Program with Juanita George and Ben Feigl, Alicamp 2022. Alicamp would like to thank our gold sponsors Intopia, Salesforce and Telstra, and silver sponsors ANZ, Deloitte Digital and Coles. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining. Today we'll be covering how to create your very own digital accessibility training program. We'll share lessons we learned building our enterprise digital accessibility training program at Navy Federal Credit Union, which we call our Accessibility Academy. So a little about us. I joined Navy Federal Credit Union in 2020 and currently work as an ADA digital program manager for the Marketing Agile Delivery Team and chair the ADA Task Force and Digital Allies Community Practice. I represent Navy Federal on the accessibility guidelines and ARIA working groups at the W3C as well. I have years of learning and development expertise, which came in handy when building out our training and development program. If you see the JD behind my name, it's true. I'm an attorney licensed in Maryland, but nothing I say today is legal advice. Ben here is my manager and joined Navy Federal in 2013. Since then, he's built out marketing's agile delivery team, supporting the development and quality assurance of marketing's web properties. He's led multiple accessibility objectives for NFCU since 2017 and is the main advisor for the Digital Allies. He also is NFCU's advisory committee representative for the W3C, and he's a safe agilist. Next slide. So how do you go about building your program? Well, there are nine different steps that we'll cover today. First, getting leadership buy-in. Then, defining your accessibility process. Mapping job roles to accessibility responsibilities. Performing a training needs assessment. Getting content. Creating role-based learning paths. Developing a learning strategy. Finding your allies and putting it all together. Now, I'll turn it to Ben, who'll start us off. Thank you, Juanita. We'll start with the pre-implementation phase and the first step in the process is leadership buy-in. If you don't have leaders on board, it will be difficult to get the seat time or budget needed to run an enterprise training program. To get buy-in, you may need to do a business case outlining the benefits, which include preventing issues, reducing remediation timelines, less reliance on external accessibility experts, and reduce risk. For help, refer to the World Wide Web Consortium's Accessibility Initiatives Business Case. Next slide. Once you have leadership buy-in, how do you get started? Perform a training needs assessment. A needs assessment is a study of the gap between where you want to be and where you are now. If you already have a training program, now might be a good time to do a gap analysis. They have very similar steps. For the purpose of this presentation, we'll focus on creating a training needs assessment. To develop one, you first need to define your accessibility process. Everyone is responsible for helping produce accessible content, a well thought out process for integrating accessibility into your content creation and development processes will help you develop with accessibility in mind and prevent accessibility issues. It will also help you create your role-based learning paths. Identify critical roles within that process. Everyone's responsible for accessibility, but not every team member needs to be an expert in accessibility requirements. In fact, unless their role is an accessibility expert, it's probably not feasible to train them on everything there is to know about digital accessibility. Instead, focus on the requirements pertaining to their role in creating or checking digital content. Understand the responsibilities of each role. It's essential to understand what each person should be responsible for in the process. For example, it might not be feasible for your designers to tell your developers how to mark up a component so it complies with WCAD requirements. Identify the training each team member needs to understand the role in ensuring accessibility. Identify current pain points in your process. You may not have a process and may be creating one from scratch. That's okay. But if you have a process, try to find the pain points. Look at your accessibility audits. In what phase of the process are you finding issues? Are they related to how the functionality page or content was developed? Or are they related to another part of the process like design? Think about why those pain points exist. Are they knowledge or motivation gaps? Knowledge gaps can be solved by training, but motivation gaps 
require a culture change, which is addressed through training and raising awareness about why we do this work. When looking at your process, always ask yourself, is there a better way? If so, make tweaks to the existing process. Think about what's possible and train based on that new process. This is a great time to rethink how you approach accessibility. Next slide. As you're performing your training needs assessment and start creating your training strategy, remember that repetition and retrieval lead to retention and mastery. As you're finding out who your learners are and what they need, it may be good to have an expert look through your course library, the roles and responsibilities you've identified, and see if there are any areas you'll need additional training. As you go through the process, you may have all the online training you need, but you may need other formats, such as live training and more hands-on approaches. Adjust your training strategy to address your learners' needs and the root cause of accessibility findings. Next slide. Now that you've gotten leadership buy-in and performed your training needs assessment, it's time to develop your training strategy. Great learning strategies include the following. Clear roles and responsibilities, a map of learning content to those roles and responsibilities, learning in different formats. This is also important for universal design learning. Appropriate spacing or timing of learning. Opportunities for learners to use what they've learned. Ways to measure the impact of learning on performance. A strategy for collecting and responding to learner feedback. And a well thought out communication strategy. Next slide. So who needs accessibility training? In short, everyone. But different roles will have different training needs. The key roles you'll need to consider at any organization are leaders, procurement, human resources, content creators for web and digital documents, designers, developers, quality assurance, and specialized roles, including accessibility roles. Next slide. Once you define the roles, you'll need to develop a list of accessibility responsibilities. If you don't know where to begin, the Web Accessibility Initiative's Roles and Responsibilities Mapping Project is a great place to start. Then you'll map accessibility topics to each role. Another great resource would be to refer to the World Wide Web Consortium's curricula. These won't fill all your needs, but they are a great resource if you're beginning to build role-based training curricula in your training strategy. Next slide. Lost yet? Trying to figure out where to go next? Don't worry, there's lots of free help out there. Check out these resources before you begin performing your needs assessment to get a better sense of how accessibility training could improve performance within your organization. The W3C Accessibility Roles and Responsibilities Project is a great place to start. If you don't currently have accessibility integrated in all phases of your development process or think those roles and responsibilities aren't well defined, the W3C curricula is great for determining the kinds of digital accessibility content to assign different roles within your organization and to help address any gaps in knowledge contributing to accessibility findings in your products or digital content. If you're looking at the maturity of your accessibility program, the W3C Ally Maturity Model can help provide guidance on where improvements can be made. Need to train accessibility testers and not sure where to start? WCAG's evaluation methodology is an excellent place to learn more about how testers should review sites. Next slide. You can't have a training program without content. To make or to buy, that is the question. You'll want to consider the following. Amounts of time you have before launch, average time to produce a single course or enough courses for a curriculum, availability of internal expertise in digital accessibility, maintenance costs, ability to produce accessible course content, and whether you want to use newer e-learning technologies, such as XAPI. Some companies may have the resources to create all their courses in-house, while some may have to purchase them or adopt a hybrid approach. Even after establishing an online curriculum, you'll still need live training. 
So be sure to account for that and other approaches in your strategy. Next slide. Don't have budget? Look at free options first. Here are some of the free offerings out there. W3C's Foundations course, Introduction to Accessibility Through Massive Open Online Courses, or MOOC, Future Learn Accessibility Through MOOC, Google Web Accessibility Course, Allycas, the Accessibility Course Roundup, and Mike Grifford's Ally Course List. If you can't track these in your learning management software, you may be able to assign these courses and have learners self-certify. If you're just getting your program off the ground, this might be an excellent way to start small and put something in place. Next, Juanita will walk us through the implementation phase. Thanks, Ben. So once you've done your needs assessment, determine who needs to be trained and what they need to know exactly, it's time to build your learning paths. Many learning management systems or LMSs provide ways to build out curricula. You can often include supplementary materials such as job aids as well. Try to make it easy for learners to find your curricula by posting it on an internet site. Know that there's a lot learners need to know. So if you have a lot of courses in your curricula, find ways to space that learning out over time and reinforce it with micro learning. Make sure you include several surveys and opportunities to get feedback from your learners. This will help you refine your learning paths and improve your offerings in the future. Next slide. Your LMS is an important and often forgotten tool in your toolkit. Many organizations are only using a fraction of the features available in their LMSs. Knowing and using more of those features can help streamline your learning administration and can be a game changer for your team and enterprise accessibility training program. Many LMSs have powerful features that can help you manage your learning paths. Some LMSs have tools that allow you to communicate directly with learners. Some offer social learning tools, while others can automatically assign learners job-specific training. Your LMS may also offer survey tools and other mechanisms to help you gather and analyze learner feedback. Get familiar with the features of your LMS and make sure to include those in your training strategy. Next slide. You can't implement an enterprise training strategy alone. You'll need to build partnerships across your organization. Important partnerships include your training teams, developers, designers, leadership, procurement office, anyone interested in uh, digital accessibility as well. Starting a community of practice or other internal employee group may help you build out those important relationships. Your allies are your champions and will help you get the support you need for your program to flourish. Next slide. After developing your training strategy, you'll need to develop a communication strategy to raise awareness. Partner with your internal and external communications teams to come up with a list of different channels. Some good ones to think about are email listservs, chat groups like Slack or Teams, intranet sites, internal social group pages, external blogs, and social media. Develop a content calendar for those different channels. One to two posts a week is a good goal with larger communications around important days. Awareness days like Global Accessibility Awareness Day or GAD are great ways to bring awareness to digital accessibility and to your training program. Be sure to include live digital accessibility events as well. Involve your partners and community of practice if you decide to create one. Sometimes the best ideas come from your internal community. Next slide. So here's a few lessons we learned. Live training and hands-on learning opportunities need to be built into learning paths. People will need to be able to practice what they've learned in order to master the more complex digital accessibility concepts. Even a great strategy won't replace in-house expertise. Hackathons, mentorships, apprenticeships, and project-based learning are excellent approaches to training in addition to online learning paths. Also, emphasize the why. Access to ICT is a human right. By furthering digital accessibility, we're creating a more just and equal world. Next slide. So let's put everything we covered today together. To build a successful training program, you'll need leadership buy-in, partnerships, a communication strategy, training content, 
role-based learning paths, opportunity for hands-on practice, and ways to measure success and gather feedback along the way. Next slide. Here are some final thoughts we wanted to share. Training is only one part of a successful accessibility program. You have to have the other parts as well. You'll not only have to convince leaders about the importance of digital accessibility, but your learners too. Don't let challenges stop you. There's a whole community out there that's ready to help. Use the resources that are out there. You're not alone in this process. Next slide. So thank you for all that you do to make the internet more accessible. I know it may not feel like it sometimes, but everything you're doing makes a difference and every step closer is a win for all of your users. It's going to take every one of us working together to create a worldwide web that reaches everyone equally, one that's finally accessible and equitable. Next slide. So here's our contact info. Feel free to reach out to us at any time if you have any questions about anything we covered today or any uh, questions about any of the links that we've shared. Thank you. Alley Camp 2022.